welcome back. If you're just joining us, it's Daybreak on Trust Television, and it's that segment where we review some of the headlines that made it to the front page of select national newspapers this morning. We'll begin this morning with the Daily Trust. And the major headline on the front page of the Daily Trust this morning reads, CBN's interest rates hike hindering growth, job creation. And that's coming from Dan Gute. With the riders, microeconomic environments, tightly manufacturing sector. That's coming from MAN. And um, FG helps on local content made in Nigeria goods. You'll find the details of this story on page four. The Punch is up next, so let's take a look at the front page of the Punch newspaper for today. A lot more stories there. Tinubu seeks National Assembly's nod as tax regime begins January next year. And Nigeria's, Nigerians bought one, uh, 16 trillion naira generators of, uh, and fuel in 2023, according to recent data released by the federal government. And CBN threatens to sanction banks rejecting old dollar notes. Really? Okay. The central, the not the central bank, the U.S. embassy, not just in Nigeria, across several African countries, have talked about how their currencies are not to be rejected. You keep using them until it gets back into their system and they are replaced. Yeah, they remain so, legal tender. So I don't understand the idea. I think it's a, it's a Nigerian thing. <laughs> I think it's a Nigerian. I well, mean, we it, saw that with the narrow design, yeah, didn't we? Indeed. Yeah. So. Um, um, yeah, that's that. But you can find more on the pages of the Punch newspaper. On the recent bombings in Borno, military plans crack down as reps begin probe. On cholera outbreak, 33 states battled 2,102 cases as NYC enforces strict camp rules. Lagos, Balsa, eight others have 90% of case burden as infectious infections spread across 122 local government areas. Uh, and uh, finally, federal government directs MDAs to patronize made in Nigeria goods. Okay, how about we start from the very top then? Well, these are some of the stories on the pages of uh, the Punch newspaper for today. All right, to the leadership newspaper, the major headline there sits atop the nameplate. And it reads, uh, it has a kicker, high energy tariff, universities can generate own electricity. And this is coming from experts queries, capacities of engineering and water resource faculties. Uh, we can't place ivory towers on special tariff. Uh, these are the discos, you know, saying it. And then Senate to discriminate non-use, to decriminalize non-use of national identity number. Um, and um, FG exempts farmers, manufacturers, MSMEs from withholding facts. Yeah, well, let's hope it's moving the needle in the right direction. Mm. Uh, finally, let's take a look at the This Day newspaper, the front page of the This Day newspaper for today. Mele carry to IOCs, that's international oil companies. Nigeria will produce its oil, won't wait for you. Okay, sounds like the man was saying quite a lot uh, in that uh, engagement. But when you think uh, of yesterday. the fact that they require yeah. JVCs, joint ventures to produce, they, they don't have no, no yeah. drilling rigs on there. So, oh, you, yeah, I don't you know how that. he's able to like say these things yeah. with a straight face. But uh, anyway, get to the details of the thoughts of the NNPCL boss on this day newspaper. Federal government issues fresh regulations on deduction of withholding tax at source. And that's where the uh, small and medium scale businesses come in. Uh, a breather for them, according to um, the federal government. Shetima, federal government seeking policy framework roadmap to revamp manufacturing sector. These and many more you can find on the pages of the this day newspaper. And I can see there on the front page, governors uh, pushing for regional security and economic integration in the southeast. You can see... Governor Hope Uzadima of Imo State, presumably speaking uh, on behalf of the governors after their meeting uh, in the South East. It's good to see governors come together, but it's more important if they actually come together and deliver uh, all of these talking points to the people across the various regions. All right, let's get to the heart of the conversation now and analyze all the uh, standout top stories today. 
to join us on the program, Mr. Wednesday himself, the one and only mm -hmm. Ben Sherman, former director news voice of Nigeria, is here this morning in his uh, famous dara. And we all know where it came from, so we're happy to have him join us this Some morning. Someday we will dedicate our time to tell you the story behind this. <laughs> I think it's his story to tell. So, <laughs> <laughs> so whenever he's coming to me, yeah. Let good, us good morning. keep the news in <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Good morning, Mr. Ben. Good morning. It's good to see you. Like, good morning, Mr. So, um, so where do we start from? There isn't much to go on on the front page of uh, the Daily Trust today, but if we can just take stock of what Angote had to say. It was, it's a stark warning at the same time, a call to action that if the federal government wants to get it right, it has to protect its local manufacturers. Most countries, if not all developed countries today, do it. They protect their own to make sure that they're able to survive the harsh global economic uh, competition that usually can easily take you out uh, of business. What are your thoughts about what Dangote had to say about not just the interest rates, but also about protecting local businesses? You see, it's very, very instructive that he said all of this in the State House, mm -hmm. where the chief pilot, the chief pilot of Nigeria is, talking of President Atinobu. Now, when we're talking about growth, there are policies that must be friendly to investors. By the time you jack up interest rates, even IMF at the point was warning Nigeria, the rate at which you, you are going, when indeed many Nigerians will say IMF has always been teleguiding Nigeria, and that's why we are always failing. Now, if they say, look, take a second look at some of the approaches, I think they should, the Nigerian authority should also look at it very well. So, a situation where you want to set up an industry, even the taxation itself. You have um, Federal Inland Revenue is there. Land Use Act is there. Local governments will come. You just find some people placing timbers with irons. They're talking about trying to generate this or that. Everybody is taxing, you know. Outside that, what you also call um, uh, tax, um, uh, um, uh, honorarium, a kind of, mm. don't pay tax till you make some profit. You just see that the environment, where is the electricity? It's not there. Mm. Where is, um, uh, uh, what do you call, good roads, infrastructure? Not there. You have to have water too. Not there. Uh, so, the whole of this, if you don't begin to protect, like this thing you call the growth, mm. then the job creation, you see companies just, if you just close, he, he, you he, he, go, yeah, he exactly Yeah, he exactly warned about job losses, more of these multinationals or even local companies moving outside the shores of Nigeria to go to, uh, you know, environments where it's safer, it makes more economic sense for them to, to operate. Do you think that coming from Angote is going to perhaps jolt the Tinubu administration to take another look? Because this is a clear shot at the CBN. <sighs> which has jacked up interest rates to as high as 26% over the past three months. Yeah, you see, a very stubborn political uh, grasshopper mm. will say, who is Dangote? Mm. But every government in the world, once you know these are people who help to create uh, employment, mm. generate employment, keep the youths engaged, they don't joke with them. But when we begin to hear that um, NNPCL will say, there will be no much crude oil to give Dangote, for example. It says a lot. And uh, when you begin to see too much insecurity on the farms, I mean, government will always be talking, we are going to do this, we are going to do this. See, we are in July. By August, gentlemen, those late grains could be something like millet or sorghum. If at the end of July you are not yet transplanting because you, 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 you transplant them so that you get the August rain, then September it begins to show signs of becoming very good uh, yields. If you don't take care of this, the rainy season, and by September we should also be talking of planning for the dry season. 
Not that when you are in February, you begin to say we are planning for dry season uh, farming. Uh, so we have to look at all of this. Then you, the university environment too. I mean, if look at the Chinese technology, touch light, we can't make. Airpiece, we can't make. But persistently you see all these strikes going on, going on. Now, you meet them too, they say, look, we've been carrying out very nice researches. They are workable, they are doable, but you don't get buyers because <clears throat> government itself goes shopping abroad instead of looking at what really we have. And <clears throat> that's why the issue of local content must come on board. You know, look at what you call pharmacognosy. It's part of a um, pharmacy. And uh, look at the, 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 now what's this tablet the 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 uh, the producing naprosad or something that's the Institute of Pharmaceutical Research and Development. They have tablets whereby uh, those suffering from um, from um, um, this sickle cell could be well managed, but. Who knows exactly what they are doing? Okay. This is an example of what they call local content. Mm -hmm. And uh, sickle cell anemia is, is an African disease. It's, it's not with the whites over there. So if it is our own problem, let us begin to look at it. All right, talking remember about... remember Sunday before you go in, when we had COVID-19, there was money set aside to research on medicine research on diseases what is the status who is overseeing oversighting that 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 money right. any project to show for it okay um, i'm sure it's question um uh, that should suppose as journalists to also follow up with uh, another interesting story this morning on the front page of the punch newspaper is the one that is indicating and coming of course from the federal government that nigeria brought generators worth 16 trillion the size or the cost you know 16 trillion naira about um, okay Nangote spending was in billion i mean but this should give us some some independent power plant comfortably you know distributed around uh, geopolitical zones in here. what do you make of this kind of statistics i think it's a very serious mark of failure that our economy is being run using generator. If you go to the Ministry of Power, you still find them using generators. It's, it's such an irony that uh, in spite of the petroleum resources, in spite of the gas that we have, China and other countries are making a whole lot of money manufacturing generators. And every budget, year in, year out, Ministries are budgeting how much they will spend on diesel or petrol because of generators. They are talking of servicing these generators. So why don't we begin to look at all of this? And if those days we were saying electricity was um, part of uh, exclusive legislative list, now it is concurrent. Uh, so let us begin to see states go into electricity and sell what they have uh, to, to, to their people on the price they want or they think their people can afford. Uh, so it's an, a huge embarrassment, uh, to, to, to say the least, that we are spending so much to import generators, to foil these generators, to enable us to do government work. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you, you can also imagine, even in terms of fighting insecurity. How do you power some of these things? Now, having a, 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 the sun is here with us. How, to what extent are we using it? Uh, you know, this is where our research agencies or institutions uh, should, should, should just uh, come in. But we just allow this sun to, to, to just lay west, just like yeah. that. Just like we also allow this heavy rain. That, that, I mean, if Katsina the Emir of Katsina, or is it Dola, who is now saying that people should pray. The last, as of yesterday, talking of 16 or 17 days, that there hasn't been rain. 
So it says a lot. If we have all these dams there, we do some more expansions, evacuate the mud there, let us harvest more of the rain. And when there is no rain now, we can use the water for irrigation, uh, for domestic activities, you know. But it's like we are so knowledgeable outside government. But when we enter government, <laughs> it's like there is a sapping <laughs> of that knowledge. All right. Um, before we let you go, there's the important story still on the front page of um, the Punch newspaper where the federal government is directing MDAs to patronize made in Nigeria. I mean, we had an executive order on the need to prioritize yeah. by made in Nigeria. But do you think, other than the rhetorics, that these government officials understand what we mean when we say patronize made in Nigeria? Is because, it? I mean, we see ministry vehicles that would prioritize Prad the Prados yeah, yeah. and Lexus and of this world. European and Japanese And products. Japanese yeah. products rather than the ones made in Nigeria. Yes. You see, this man in Anambra stroke, Inugu, mm. who makes this uh, Chukuma... Um, uh, Innocent. Uh, Innocent Motors, Chief Chukuma. Truly, we do one-on-one. -on -one. We speak on phone. I was asking him about three weeks ago, how is business? He said, see, my brother... It's wonderful. Government will say we'll patronize our own. But what has happened is you find state governments placing orders. We supply these vehicles. We don't see the money. And so how can we compete with these people? But when you are importing these cars, sometimes right from the word go, you've already paid the makers abroad. Mm, okay. But when it is yours at home, no, I know him. He's my brother. He's, I know the company. We gave them the land. Mm -hmm. No, it is. The, and you just find government. I mean, look at the, the, the vehicles, we, what you call emirates, these mine resistant vehicles. Go to Kaduna and see what they are doing. This Unzogu thing. I mean, these are vehicles that, that have been commissioned, deployed in the fight against uh, Boko Haram. Right. Can't we now manufacture many of these? Send to Chad. Send to Cameroon, send to Ghana, because what any other vehicle is doing in terms of mine resistance, these ones are doing, and these are all homemade. Yeah, so when right. they say patronize Nigeria, that's what I, we mean. I there's, think innocent there, is right. finding it there's easy. There's a lot of double way. standard and hypocrisy <laughs> with some of these statements because they are not true to their words. I mean, these are things that we can easily, uh, you know, legislate and even budget funds for directly Absolutely. and make sure that any procurement that is made an Nigerian product is first prioritized before any other product. But then again, we live in a country where some of these things do happen on a regular basis. All right. Basis. Um, I, I wish that we get to a point where everybody in government understand what it truly means yeah. to buy Nigeria. Like I we said, want to thank you enter government and become short yeah. of ideas. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ben Sherman, uh, former director of News Voice of Nigeria, now retired but not tired. Sure. Thank you very much for finding time to be here.